Hello, I'm Mark Nanneman. This is Power Stuff. Today we're going to talk about how to send an email with a background image from Power Automate that will display in external email platforms like Gmail. So here we have our flow that sends an email with a background image in the email. And what it's doing here is I've got this compose action where I'm storing my URL for the image host. And we have to host the image with a URL. We can't just inline embed it um, with base64 encoding using the data URI function in Power Automate. Um, that'll work if you send an email to yourself or to someone else in your system who you know is going to open it in Outlook. That'll work fine. But for Gmail, images that you uh, encode with Base64 inline in the HTML of the email, they won't show up. It'll just be blank. So you need to either have a link to the image you want to display that's public. Um, it could be on your website or your page or just somewhere where you've got the link that you could type into a URL um, in your browser and it would open up. You have to have that. And what I've done, and we'll get to this later, but what I've done is I created a flow that will host the image. And so that's what I'm doing here. The, the flow has a HTTP get request trigger. And so I just copied the link out of that flow trigger that will get the file content and then return it with a response. I just copy that link and put that here. So that's what I'm using. And then we have this email HTML template here that gets populated. It gets populated with some dynamic variables uh, supplied by the trigger. And it also puts this image in the right place and then sends the email. And when the email gets sent, it looks, um, it looks like this. So we've got our background image, and then we've got our text above the background image. And it's pretty simple to do. Let's hop in here and look at the HTML of the email. Full disclosure, I got this HTML template using an AI uh, GPT. I used Grok in this case, but you could also use Copilot. Um, I did that one. So that one option you would have is you could you could do a um, AI builder, create text with the GPT prompt, and then you could create yourself a prompt to make the email HTML. And here's what my prompt looks like. I just say create the entire HTML body for an email with a background image with this message above the background image. And then I just put my inputs in here and say the URL for the background image is blank. And you can test this out and see if it works. Um, it's it's a little hit or miss. Sometimes it gives me something that's workable and sometimes it doesn't. So you got to um, work with the prompt maybe or do some editing. Like right here, this is similar to what we need, but it's not quite right. I've seen it give me something that works in the past, but... Um, it could use some work. The The one I got from Grok worked uh, first time. So here's what it is. And um, you can read in the blog post in the description below. Um, it has the entire HTML code there and you can copy that and paste it and edit it as you see fit. I'll uh, pull up the HTML right now. and We'll kind of look at it. This is the one that works really well for me. So it starts with um, doc type HTML. We've got this header section and then the body. The key part here is this table. We create a table and give the table a background image and that works very nicely. So let's look at this background image um, code. I'll just go ahead and put style on a new line here and we'll minimize a bit. So basically, we've got this style. We have to do the CSS in line for our HTML in an email that we're sending from Power Automate. So we do background image in the style setting. And it's got this URL in parentheses and then single quotes around the URL. And right here, you could put, if you're just sending this internally to Outlook, you could do a data URI, URI um, function um, to encode your image in Base64 and just put it in line and that'll work in Outlook. But if you wanted to 
show up in Gmail like we do, we need to make sure we're, <coughs> we're putting a host URL here um, that returns the content. And then background size, it's set to cover, no repeat on the background repeat, background position is center, and then minimum height. Um, Grok gave me this 100 VH, but that fills up the whole image and I don't like that so much. So I, I edit this to either, I don't know, I've done 50, 50 before, I'll do 70. So let's do 70% of the visual height of the, of the email. And here is where the message shows up. So the this is a straight out of Grok. So it gave me a, head, a heading saying welcome and then a paragraph here with some text. So this, you would, you would replace this stuff with variables from your flow to customize the message. And that's exactly what I do here. So this is that same code. Uh, looks like I have it at 60 for VH. Let me change it to 70. And then this URL for hosting the image, I just put it right there. And then I say congrats, and then the name supplied by the trigger, and then the message beneath that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and make another edit. I'm going to make the message be italicized. So I'm going to put I'm going to put em around it. So that'll be another update. Um, another thing, and we'll get to this when we talk about the image hoster uh, flow. I set that up to where it could host, or you could set it up to where your image host can do different images. So you could dynamically supply an image based on some logic in your flow. Um, so you could get different background images depending on other variables. And so this, this URL has this parameter in the, um, has like a parameter in the relative URL of the of the uh, get endpoint, and it's here in uh, curly braces, and it's just called IMG. So right now I'm not using it, so it doesn't matter. I can just leave it in there like that. But um, we could update that flow and pass some some parameter here to tell the flow which image to get in return. Um, you could put in like the actual SharePoint ID number of the, the file you want to return. Um, but you want to be careful doing that for sending stuff out externally because someone could hack that basically. They could get this URL out of the email and then they could start changing that number to get any files that are in your uh, SharePoint site. So when you're doing this, you want to, and we'll talk about it more when we talk about that part of the, the flow, but you do want to be careful that the SharePoint site you're hosting these images from the best practice would be that site is called public images or something, and you only have stuff in there that you're okay with anyone seeing. All right, so we take this URL, we plug it into the HTML, and then we simply plug that HTML into our send an email. And we'll just go ahead and test it right now. Oh. I'll type in Johnny Boy for the name. Hello. How is that background image looking in Gmail? Question mark. And then here I'll type in my Gmail and click run. And there we go. We've got our background image and the text shows up with that italicized emphasis styling. And I kind of I like the sizing of this. Um, we could adjust the inline CSS of the email to maybe make the background image smaller, make this uh, message bigger, because the message is a little small in this example, but um, the concept works just fine. So now let's talk about the hosting flow. If we refresh this, we'll see a very recent run Okay, well, I was thinking we would see a very recent run here for this flow, but uh, I'm, what might be happening is uh, Gmail might be doing some sort of thing where it, it recognizes that the 
image is the same image it fetched um, previously. So it's just using using it from the cache instead of calling the endpoint again, which is actually really cool. That actually uh, helps us out, you know, so we're not eating up um, flow runs and actions uh, over here. So that's actually kind of cool. So if we look at one of these recent runs, we can, another thing we could do is I could copy this, um, I can copy the endpoint and force it to run again. So I can just paste this over here. All right, so now we've we've called the flow. So now if I hit back, yeah, now we've got a recent run from that one we just did. So the way this flow works is pretty straightforward and very simple to set up. Um, we've got this HTTP request trigger, and we have to set it up to be anyone, like no authorization, so anyone can call it. And we have the method set to get. If we want to set it up to dynamically source the content it returns, we have to put something in the, we have to put some kind of parameter in the relative path. So I just do this right here. Sometimes people will do it like this. They'll say img slash img. That way you'll have something up here in the, up here in the trigger path. Um, the URL, you'll have like a IMG slash the variable. So you, you remember where to put it, but you don't need to do that. You can just do this and that's all you got to do for that. And then once you save the flow, your URL will be generated that you would copy and paste either in your browser tab or in your, your email HTML. Then we've got this action here to get the the file content out of SharePoint. Right now it's just hard coded in to grab um, this one file, but we could add some logic up here to filter on that parameter passed to the URL to determine what image to get in return. And as I mentioned before, you wanna consider security here because technically this could be used to get other file contents, even documents out of your SharePoint. Um, if someone, if if the if there's a ID or something in the URL is used to determine what file to return, like if you did something as simple as putting your SharePoint ID uh, as the as a parameter in your URL, and then we just on here on get we are uh, we, we use a different action to get a file properties based on the item ID, which is the integer, and then we use that identifier passed here to a get file content, well then someone could just increment the integer in the URL to get different files um, programmatically out of your SharePoint. So you wanna think about that and the best practice would be to make a SharePoint site that only has, it's called like public images or whatever, public files, and it only has stuff in there that you wanna host in emails or on a website or whatever so that it doesn't matter if someone hacks it to get other files because everything in there is 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 safe uh, for public viewing. And then you just do a response here and you dump your file content out of this action into response and that's all you gotta do to, to set this up. It's very simple. All right, um, well, that's all there is to it. That is how you send an email from Power Automate with a background image that is viewable in Gmail or other external email platforms. Pretty straightforward. If you found the video helpful, uh, please give me a like, subscribe, and leave a comment. Read my blog post in the description below. And uh, also let me know if there's any other topics or problems you'd like me to solve in Power Automate or Power Apps or anything in the Power Platform. Uh, I love doing this stuff, so thanks so much for watching and have a great day.